There are so many voices in my head saying, you're not good enough, you can't do this, yeah. like constantly. It's an, an incredible thing for a human to yeah. express, isn't it? Yeah. Just your sort of soul. Welcome back to Adventures in Sound. Introducing today's guest, Hannah Peel. Hannah is a Mercury Prize, Ivan Novello winning, Emmy nominated composer. Hannah reveals her secret to music and we talk about being an artist in today's world, imposter syndrome, and whether the old fashioned idea of being a struggling artist still holds any weight. The key to music and, and any art form really is, is it never stops. Mm. And it, you will always keep learning. Yeah. You will be learning and developing until you are dead. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty of it. From her own solo albums to composing soundtracks like Game of Thrones, The Last Watch, or to orchestrating and conducting for artists like Paul Weller, her work is ambitious, forward-looking, always adapting and reinventing new genres and hybrid musical forms. I got a call saying, you know, would you like to play sing and violin and sing? And I was like, all three, I was like, amazing, so I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. And even though it was still session work, it very much felt like I was doing something that I really could get into. And just programming synths up, vintage ones, to sound like how they would have done on an 80s record, you learn the skills of, of how to use the filter, how to use the LFOs. Mm. Like, everything like became a learning curve. I didn't really, I mean, I don't know anything about synths, so you can treat me like a complete baby with this stuff. But when you, are you tuning the, how do you tune a synth? What, what's like going on with that? I class myself as a non-improviser. So if, if you would just like to go, right, here's a load of stuff and then go play, I'd just literally be like, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Mm. So in my head, I have like pre-prepared like settings so that I know the gig will move smoothly. Nice. Now that doesn't mean that those settings are right because it's literally like the difference between like a millimetre or even half a millimetre of, of tweaking a knob to a completely different sound wow. to major or minor and sometimes you have no idea if that's going to work. So right. so a lot of like, <laughs> a lot of it, like you remember, you know that like phrase when you go and play pool in a bar or something and you're just like, yeah, don't play but I hit and hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. It's kind of like that, like you just yeah. like, right, we'll just hope for the best. Yeah. I very much have like a kind of a boundary to work within. Yeah. And I think that's important. Definitely. And like boundaries are really, I find very good in music because like I think it gives you a palette. You know what you're working towards. You know how to then think about bringing out the best in a certain instrument or utilising that sound. I think that boundary of then like going, right, well, that's the palette, that's that. So it's the same with the synthesizers. So yeah, tuning them can lead to like magical things that you never expected like melodies like yeah. just tweaking a knob just like there was that bit in the opening one where I was just tweaking it and then it was going yeah and it was yeah, like yeah. this weird voice yeah but like I've never done that before yeah and if, if I have done that before it sounded crap <laughs> so, <laughs> so there was an element of me going I'm just gonna move this and see what happens and I was like oh that's a nice note okay I'll move it again oh that's a really nice note <laughs> So exciting. So that, yeah, you're always on the edge. Yeah. It's a lovely feeling. Yeah. And very, you're on the edge. Yeah. You feel very naked. Oh, big time. And But there's an element, if you're surrounded by people that are actually very supportive, that yeah. it doesn't matter too much. Finding your peers and finding people that you can play with is yeah. the best thing. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And uh, coming to experience something with us that uh, we, this is all improvised. We have a few little kind of boundaries that we work within, but we only ever play together once. And we had, for me anyway, it was probably one of the best shows I've ever done in June last year. And I said to baby, I'd love to do it again. when we just get on stage and play. One of the things that changed my outlook and feeling comfortable about the way that I view music. It, well, I saw an interview with Laurie Anderson and it's on YouTube, it's a really amazing interview and mm. she's just sat in a garden, the sun's on her and there's like wind and she's just like saying that she's an artist. Like there's no like, 
she's not just this and she's not just that. Yeah. She's not just a painter and she's not just like she is an artist yeah. in whatever form. Mm. And as soon as she acknowledged that, then everything changed. And mm. I was like, that's just how I view it. I'm just, I will, I'll adapt and do things and you'll express stuff that you're feeling at the time because you're absorbing stuff, you're open to the world and you're absorbing it. And, and like, you know, there's that famous Nina Simone quote that the artist's role is to, is to describe what is going on. It's yeah. to help, you know, like yeah. we're almost like activists in some ways yeah. because we're out there, we're doing stuff, we're having conversations, we have the luxury of, of travel and doing things as part of our job, noticing stuff mm -hmm. that people that might not get the opportunity to see if they're in an office working. Yeah. So um, I think it's really important to, to always just stay fresh and on your toes. And, and I really respect artists that as they're getting older, are using younger musicians as well, mm -hmm. because I think it's such a, an important thing that you keep your eyes open. And it's one of the reasons why I love working yeah. with Paul Weller, because I find like his attitude to music is very much about quality, persistence, learning, and, and, and trusting people constantly. You know, he'll, so he'll never funny. stand on stage and be a tribute act to himself. Yeah. It's so always inspiring. like the next record, the new thing, and mm. I think that's really important. Yeah. Hannah is an extraordinary force. She has a balance of both strength, wisdom, and compassion that I think is really unique and rare. But I grew up doing grades, yes. and you read in the music, and then you don't, you don't stray from that. And if you do stray from that, it's like you're no, in trouble. you're wrong. Like you've got to keep back, go back to what you're doing, like. Yeah. And um, I ended up having a piano teacher that actually he'd been playing in clubs in, in Barnsley, wow. like from the age of like 14, even probably 13. He was working solidly as, a, as an entertainer from that age. Wow. And so when I started lessons with him, it was like opening up a different world because he was like, you have to learn how to work. That's basically like, you're not here just to play grades. You have to learn how to move and be flexible and so even though we did our like my grade eight with him yeah. it was all it was still based around the fact that actually he would set me tasks and be like right play this and then move into this piece and you'd just be like going oh my god <laughs> but but it it taught me that level of like working and using boundaries and and how you kind of judge that and yeah and I think that's really important it's really I think mm. that's quite rare yeah that that in teaching yeah and I think you know I think it was that working class club environment he had no other options that yeah. was it I remember my teacher saying things to me that I just I didn't I understood them sort of logically but I didn't understand it like in the doing or the physical thing and sometimes like even now a penny will drop ah, that's what she meant oh, that's, yeah. what, that's that thing but I love that I also love this whole thing of you know reading music and not reading music and Christian said actually that when he came up here and he's always felt like he says himself I feel like an imposter I don't read music and he came up here and then he was like oh my goodness there's this whole tradition where people nobody reads music and he's like I feel so cheated because it's so allowed yeah in some traditions to not read um and yeah and that's sort of I think that's really important isn't it that you, you it's it's accessible for everybody no matter what angle you're coming at it from yeah 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 definitely oh I feel so inspired it's just <laughs> I don't know it's just it's everything you're saying is just amazing and uh oh yeah it's, it's <laughs> it is it really it's it is it's totally inspiring oh thanks Alice I, no, you know like all. I think it's one of those things that when you're in a conversation with somebody it you you start to also analyze how you work yes because none of us have these gorgeous lives yeah like there are so many voices in my head saying you're not good enough you're you you can't do this yeah. like constantly yeah and and when we say like uh there's always this feeling of like a struggling artist mm -hmm. and, and i don't believe in that me neither i i, I 
I've never been creative if I've been in a place of struggle. I completely agree. Um, I feel exactly the same. I think yeah. it's it's a, a trope and yeah. and yes, Van Gogh cutting off his ear vibes. Yeah, isn't it? I think it can be helpful for people and it can bring out stuff and it can be a release. But for me, it's never been that case. Yeah. So I've really I've had to learn like who it is that I like, what I don't like, how I am placed. Yes, and that's personal journey and that's taken years yes but yeah like even like last night I felt like I went on stage and and what I love about playing with baby is like you go on stage uh, the world disappears and those voices that are there to haunt you whenever you're sat on your own in a studio in front of a computer screen or you're scoring have gone yeah because there's there's it's just like it doesn't matter and if they come in they go and it's and you know sometimes you'll stand there and go and it's just a flash of a moment. Yeah. And she says exactly the same. And you yeah. wouldn't look at her and go, how does she even have that thought? Because yeah, she's yeah, just yeah. magically <laughs> dancing around. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. like, but she says, she has little moments of flashes of like, what am I doing next? Yeah. And, then, and like, I, I can't do this or, but you, it's all about that self struggle. Yeah. It, so I've definitely got to the point where like, uh, I'm not, Luckily, you know, like I'm able to live and work as a musician and artist and composer without having to do the struggles that I did when I started off, yeah. which is like, how do I pay my rent? Exactly, yeah. Like, it's not as forefront in my mind anymore. Yeah. And I feel really proud of that because it takes a lot to get to that point. Yeah, that's amazing. I felt so inspired by her vision, her strength, and her understanding of her role as an artist in this world, what it means to create, and why it's important to follow your own voice. That is like one tunnel of wind and rain down there, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, totally. I know I'll be taking many of her stories and nuggets of wisdom forward in my own career, helping me to find my musical voice. Honestly, thank oh, you so much. An absolute pleasure oh, to come and talk. You, and um, yeah, I hope it's useful. Amazing.